we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabel Zimmerman, and I have Kate Reed, my friend, who um, we are recording this conversation around her sessions with me and how that impacted her, not impacted her, what was her experience. And I thought that it would be really good for us to share our journey together and just listen in. Kate, say hello. Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you so much, Isabel. I'm so excited. Me too. All right, so we're gonna dive right in. Kate, um, how were you before your awakening, I would say? What was your, did you have a regular job? What was your routine? I did. I would say that I um, grew up, was raised and lived really a very typical 3D, old approach, conventional life. That being said, you know, a good one for the, in the old approach by most people's standards. Um, I had a great childhood and you know, went to school. I was, you know, a straight A student. I was like high achieving in sports. I, so I really have this interesting background and I, I think I really created that to see um, that, like, I would say I lived the old approach, quote unquote, well. And I think that that is serving me now in the shift because even living it well doesn't really work out. Does that, if that makes sense, or it just isn't as fulfilling as the shift to the new approach. So going back to school and again, like I, you know, on Joshua Live today was lots on like schooling, which is like, it's just so funny. You know, I grew up with like, my mom was a school teacher and my dad's an architect. And so the way that I grew up was like, you went to school every day. Like, like you didn't, you didn't stay home. Like, you know, you had to be, you were really only if you were really, really, really sick. You went to school every day and then you went to university, then you got a job. Um, I went, uh, to UBC here and got out, went, got into commercial real estate right after university. Uh, my, you know, my career mirrored my, my schooling and, I worked in commercial real estate for 20 years up to last year when I was laid off, but I'll thread a little bit. There's overlap when I actually started having my awakening. So again, you know, I was a very, very much like prided my very all old approach language, even here, like prided myself on my achievements and like my reputation and were all these things that I'm like slowly stripping away. But when you have them really ingrained, they can be a lot to strip away, right? I was quote unquote, like proud of my schooling and my career. And I was proud of my reputation in, in my, yep. in my field and I worked hard and we were just joking a little bit before we started recording. You know, I was, uh, you know, I wake up at 5am, go to the gym. I mean, I still do love going to the gym. I like absolutely love working out. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it was like, wake up at 5am, you go to the gym and you, you work and, you know, I was proud if I worked a 12 hour day and if I worked more than that, then I was <laughs> proud of that. It was like, Oh, I worked so hard and, and I worked out and I like got all this other stuff done. I even thought that I thrived in stress. Like I actually remember making comments like that. I was like, I thrive so well, like under pressure, I thrive so well with stress. Like I actually thought those were good things. Good thing. so like a good attribute. Yeah. Attribute. But it is, it is in that paradigm of um that construct you know it is you were killing it so you were <laughs> killing it in you you were playing by the rules you were being a good girl you were a hard worker dedicated yeah making good money yeah everybody likes you everybody thinks you're doing a great job you're this that and the other so then things really i would say the start of the awakening for me, although I wouldn't have no one to call it that really happened in my early thirties. So like around 32. And with that, I started getting like physically sick. Um, at that time I was kind of only true to me. I was just like, really didn't know if I really had anything going on with me. Um, you know, I did have miscellaneous like diagnosis and stuff like that, but I just also was like, maybe I'm just like so burnt out. And I started, so 32, I really, I would say really was the start of um, 
going inward because, and then also at that time I had always just, honestly, I had always just thought that, you know, the next check off the list, so to speak, was I thought for sure by 30, you know, I'd be married and on my way to like three kids. And I never thought that that just wasn't always going to be the next, like, Ooh, yeah, check, check, check. So all of a sudden at 32, I was thinking something's kind of, you know, what is my life? Like these cracks. I mean, I see it now as the most beautiful thing in the entire world, but those were the cracks of like, something's kind of not right here. I'm wait a second. I do. I actually really love my job. I am not, I I'm single. What kind of, what am I doing here? Like, what is my life? And I'm also not feeling like I'm now also really, really physically sick. So it was, it was very, at that time I would have described like very isolating, but that can be really beneficial for us as well, as we all know. Right. So I really did have to go inward. I didn't feel like I had anyone to talk to or, um, discuss, discuss things with, talk about myself or what was going on. And I, and at that time I started gravitating towards like, I always believed in like the eternal nature, souls. I always had this and this desire to know more. I always had that. Um, mm. But it was then that I really sought kind of those, you know, podcasts and books and um, seeing, you know, mediums. And, it, and it is interesting because that, that that knowing was so there that wasn't even though I hadn't really gone in that direction yet it was very innate and very uh, aligned with me I didn't it was it seemed very very quote-unquote normal natural to to start going in that path but that that though that was still quite a few years of you know I was still working and I was just getting more and more exposed to you know spiritual concepts and um, I'll kind of fast forward through those like a six or few years there, six years ish, um, in my thirties, uh, which again, I think that was just the evolution to the beginning of my awakening and spiritual path. I found Abraham in, I would have been, it was like 20, yeah, 2018. And then that opened a floodgate for sure. Like I let nothing else before I, I was liking all these concepts. So I, really was like, I, I need to know more. I need to know more. Abraham really, that was the floodgate. I was just started listening to Abraham like every day, like around the clock basically um, for a year. And then I found Joshua in 2019. And wow. so I, that pretty much has changed my entire life. And um Everyone knows the beautiful crystal in our group. We found Joshua at the same time. We, we were working together. We found Joshua at the same time we started the boot camp. And it was like, we both found that online. And before we started the boot camp, we we're like both literally listening to like every single podcast and the round tables too that were available on the Josh. Like I could I couldn't stop listening. I was listening in the car while I was at work. I was listening to like just over and over and over again because there was like, you know, fewer than there are now. Over and over. And I just couldn't get enough. And it was like, oh, this is it. This is all the answers that I've wanted to know. This is explaining physical. This is explaining why I'm here, why we're all here. This is explaining everything that I wanted to know. This is how I want to live my life. This is, it was, it felt like, honestly, it felt better than if I hit the jackpot of the lottery. That's how it felt. <laughs> but, Oh, I'm getting somewhere. So that's, that's how I met you. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody said, so why were you interested in doing a past life regression? Oh, you know, so, so that, so the first year, so that took me 2020. And then I started, I had this really cool experience with meeting another soul so another human in 2020 is a, a guy. I'd actually known him for a long time through work, but I really had the sense of, I recognized him and I hadn't had that before. There was this knowing and a recognition and it dove me into incredible deep fear. So 
like this a layer like romantic love fear and i to be honest i didn't really know it was happening to me internally like i was like whoa, whoa i didn't even know i had fear so even though i was still single i always found it i found it easy to date easy to enter relationships easy to in the old approach easy easy to meet guys like none of that stuff even were, were slight triggers in, in a fear department. But all of a sudden I realized I was at this point of like actually loving someone was incredibly fearful for me. Um, and this one human brought this fear up for me. I and mean, he gave me the most beautiful gift ever by like kind of like coming into my life and showing me this fear and it was you, you know, Gary helped me so much. That summer. So that would have been summer of 2020, like Jessica, you know, and it was that fall, Gary kind of established what actually would be the first Ascension program. It was kind of a bit of a trial. There was a small group of us and he'd kind of just got the initial like kind of downloads for it. So it was very one-on-one. -on -one. I feel incredibly grateful to have as you know, he just kind of came up with the plots on an individual basis every day. Yeah. It was in that, that he said, okay, you, he's like, okay, your fears, like all about, you really don't have like that many fears about anything. But he's like, you have a huge fear of like loving the, the one, like, you know, in, in yeah. any life. And it just was so obvious. He's like, this is, this is other lifetimes for you. Like you don't, you haven't even lost the one in this lifetime and you haven't even real, you know, you haven't, you haven't loved the one. Yeah. You haven't loved someone really, truly in this lifetime. You have a lot of fear from other lifetimes. Fast forward to you, you know, and Jessica really, she downloaded that as well for me. She like, you, this is like really other lifetimes for you, like to clear. And then you and I, that would have been there for 2021, I think was the first time we did our first session. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Very, it's 2021 and it was incredible and it was amazing and we've done and it was true and it your was your so co-worker was in another yeah. life yeah and you were the daughter of a king I believe mm -hmm. and he was a servant he was the kitchen boy yeah and you fell in love and your dad had him be, killed and he yeah we couldn't be together and and uh it was uh, there's nothing for anyone out there you know if you're inspired like do these sessions because also you have there okay i just need to say like i think some people might have average oh is it scary or is it like is it hard first of all couldn't be easier it's fun and it's clearing and it's healing but you're not if you have emotions like you know that it'll just feel beautiful because you'll feel them like healed because you're still totally conscious. And so you'll go and you might see yourself experiencing a traumatic lifetime, but you're not reliving that trauma to the same extent. You actually just get to see it in a way and have an understanding of this lifetime. So if you're drawn to this, you just might need clarity in terms of why, why might you have such an intense fear? So my fear around loving quote unquote the one or you know the you know true love i was brought to understand so much about our other lifetimes bleeding through because of and this it's all our creation right i created this like deep fear in this lifetime but it's also helped me understand what all of physical reality is the bleed through of our lifetimes that we're living all of our lifetimes right now and they're unifying. So we do, any of us who are awakening will have emotions and intensities uh, that are other lifetimes. So if something is kind of not making sense to you about this lifetime, like, wait a second, like, why is that seem so, this doesn't even make sense. I haven't even seen anyone, you know, I remember Gary saying like, are your parents still together? I was like, yep. Like, like, you know, there was, he's like, have you witnessed? I was like, nope, like no witnessing. No, like, you know, he's like, oh yeah. He's like, you're having a lot of bleed through from, you know, other lifetimes for sure. And, and yeah, I do. I, I, I did. I like to say, Jessica, they start saying like, you know, 
you did. You've done the like, you've seen it and you know that you're okay. And you know that now in this lifetime, you can have a romantic relationship in this lifetime that doesn't need to mirror many of our other lifetimes. But for many of us, um, as we know, our other lifetimes, many, if not maybe practically all of them have been to a large extent, like traumatic, like, like oh, quote unquote hard. They've all been perfect too. We know that, but like loss of love, like on the streets, starving, deaths, losing children. You know, it's, they've been more of the traumatic, suffering, fear-based lifetimes. So if but you also saw a beautiful lifetime. So, you know, we're going to go into your lifetimes and then we're going to talk about your spirit guides or your inner being. Mm -hmm. But you saw that beautiful lifetime of the English woman, very married, happily married, living like on a country cottage, farmhouse, you know, just beautiful, just a beautiful life. Yes. So my inner being really took me to a quote unquote, more maybe traumatic lifetime. And then took me to a beautiful life where I would, per- Kate would perceive that to be quite an idyllic, like, like married, like she, she had three children. So my inner being took me to know that I really think it's all like, I can have whatever I want in this lifetime, but also to know that we do have variety of lifetimes and we're eternal it's all good no matter what we've chosen every lifetime for a specific purpose and we've chosen it from the creator we've never we've never gone in and gone oh shoot that didn't end up being a good one (laughs) you know it's always come from us as the creator and I think when you do these past life regressions, I I think you can get so much out of it. So you can see like the beautiful explorations that you've been on before or having right now, like other timelines. I'm still getting all the terminology, um, but we, we know it in our hearts. You know, so we've explored physical reality as humans in many different ways. Um, And sometimes it's still very, it's still a limited perspective to say, oh, that was like a hard, you know, a hard one. And that was a good one. We know to be neutral, but sometimes I think seeing those can bring you to a more state of neutrality, right? So it's like, when I look at those two, think of like visiting those two lifetimes of mine, and I've now seen other lifetimes as well. And I, you know, um, have a sense of a, a number of them. Those would have been created equally by me. Like not one would have been, you know, they, they were both created yeah. from the creator, us, source, and both created like equally in love for like an equal exploration of this physical reality. There's not a good or bad exploration to have a better or worse. They're not, there's no hierarchy, you know, they're, they're equally created um, from love, but it's, it's also, it's a lot of fun and you can get the yeah. healing, understanding I think also some people might think, oh, well, you know, one, why do I need to? Well, you're really just discovering more about yourself. You know, you're really just awakening more and discovering more about who you are and maybe some of uh, what you have in this life. You're a combination. You're all, you, you are all your lifetime. So it's fun to see yeah. some of the awaken. I like um, in your session, when I was talking to your uh, non-physical team, how, you know, they were talking about you and they, I think you were looking for a sign, but it was, they had an owl land on top of your head. Yeah. And that was hysterical. And so they said, we gave her an owl on top of her head. So she could not discount it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I had put it, I had put out like a number of years ago, um, to to source as a sign that source existed so this is like quite well, quite a bit before joshua at least several years ago if not almost the 10 year ago mark and i remember it was like in a podcast and it was like kind of a spiritual pod, you know or sorry not even podcast like a, a blog or something and it was like an it was just yeah. an exercise and it said like you know pick 
you know, it was like the universe has your back, like source exists essentially. And it was like, pick a sign that'll be, you know, show you that source exists. And it didn't even have to be an animal. It, it was, it was whatever. And it just said, you will then start to kind of see that image or sign, you know, you'll notice it all the time. So you were to pick something that you obviously don't see every day, you know, necessarily every day. Rare enough, but not so rare, I guess, essentially. I can't remember the full description of the blog, but it was, you know, a detailed what, what you do. And the first thing that came to mind was an owl. I don't even, I'm not like a bird person. <laughs> I don't really, I'm like not a bird person. I'm not, I don't really like owls necessarily. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm like, yeah. But, kind of funny. I couldn't, I couldn't get that. The owl just came to me so strongly then. And I thought I kept thinking one, my ego kept going like, can I think, maybe should I think something better? Like I wanted to think of something like more fun or cute or better. Or I don't even know, but I thought, no, the owl is like not letting me like leave this image. And I remember kind of jokingly to myself thinking, well, I don't even think I've ever seen an owl live before. Like I, I'm like, I guess but it's just that you, you didn't need to see, if, even if you picked an animal, you didn't see, need to see it live. You can just see like images here, yeah. here and there. So, I was, but I remember thinking, well, I guess if I ever see it, and this is literally what I said, I, I guess if I ever see an owl actually in person, then I'll really know source exists. So fast forward from that, I do start to catch the image of the owl places or like owl figurines or I go into store and all of a sudden I realize have these always, like, have there always been so many owl figurines? Have these always been popular? Because they seem to see images of owls everywhere for like so many years. And again, the idea yeah. was see them and just know that is literally source saying, like, yeah, we're here. We got you back. We got your back. And then uh, fast forward to that would be, that would have been the fall of 2020. And yeah, I was uh, out and I was running. And <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I didn't know it was necessarily, I didn't, well, I didn't know what landed on my head at first. I didn't know what it was. Something landed on my head. Mind. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty freaked out at the time. <laughs> What's not? Yeah, they even said it. Your team was <laughs> like, and she freaked out. <laughs> Gosh, I was like, what the? And I was with a girlfriend running. I was like, oh my God. Like, anyway, I was freaking out even more than I, I don't need to like <laughs> uh, react to that scene. And, uh, then anyway, it like flew off my head and I just remember just like flying and just seeing it ahead and then it landed on landed on like a branch and a tree just ahead and just like turned around and just like looked at me and I was like whoa that was just the coolest thing ever yeah and I thought okay now there's really no going back now I really know source exists there there we have it like yeah yeah so the confirmation of that story mm -hmm. in your session did did it solidify when you went under because we'll, typically we'll go into like three past lives and then we bring forth your inner being or your spirit guide what was that impact for you because now you're connected with them the owl impact no the the owl like they were telling me the owl story right that they brought the owl to you so you so you really uncovered that that owl landing on your head was not random the owl didn't land on your head because it was messing with you it was totally guided to land on your head it was inspired to land on your head so it wasn't a random act but after your session, when you awoke, you know, most people remember their, their, their past lives in their session. Sometimes people will, will remember channeling their inner being and sometimes not. But how did it impact you? Did, what did you think about channeling your inner beings? What did you think about like, oh my gosh, inner beings are really true now? Or um, what, were, what were your thoughts around that? You know what? I always, I think, I, I mean, I think I always believed that I didn't know that I could develop 
and I'm still hoping that this, you know, I'm trusting that it'll continue to um, develop, but I don't think until, until our session, I didn't, I think this would be accurate to say until our session, I really didn't know that I could open that channel for myself. Yes. So up to that session was more, oh, yeah, I've always known, you know, it was confirmation. And I, I think even the owl, it certainly did. But even before the owl, I, I had a, just a really strong sense of knowing that source, source exists. I mean, like, absolutely. Like, I, think I came in with that knowing. Yeah. So gosh, there was just a really like, there's something. I didn't really know how to identify it or describe it but definitely a knowing of there's, there's more, there's something. I never really knew how, like higher perspective. So, you know, now I feel yeah. so confident in the knowing, but again, it was that session. And then since then, cause we've done multiple sessions and it kind of slowly evolved that session marks for sure. That first time of realizing that I do have access to that. I yeah. can open that channel can be open. Like that is source doesn't just, isn't just there. I still had a little bit of that. I probably wouldn't have really necessarily believed that I could have that conduit open myself and that I could actually really hear my inner being hear source talking to me channeling through me speaking through me for anyone listening to this and who hasn't experienced it i will tell you there's nothing more cooler in the entire world it is so cool it is so fun and i think there's a, a a misconception and you can clarify this in case sometimes I don't know if sometimes it happens but for anybody because I know people have asked me personally they're like oh but do you remember everything oh I said oh you remember everything and because you're you're conscious you know but it's so cool to be aware so you're like it's almost like your Kate your ego is like really listen you're listening you just you're just observing you're just listening it's coming out of your yeah. mouth you're yeah. talking you're, you're talking through your human self, but there's no mistaking that it's not you. That's what's so cool. Yeah. There's no mistaking it at all. And I know in our daily lives, I'll speak for myself and I'm sure this would be the case for everybody. We're caught up back into our human self, caught up back in as Kate yep. and so we, we know in, we know intuitively that that mess, those messages are being provided to it. We know it. But it is, I'll speak for all the humans, it is hard on a daily basis. We're getting caught up. We're in conversations. We're in physical reality and human form. We're going about our day. Those messages are easy to confuse with. Did I just get a message or is that just my ego? But you go yeah. into like sessions, there's no mistaking it at all. You know you are getting full downloads and it is so so fun and it is so cool it's like I I just yeah you'll be talking about yourself and I mean in the third person and it's it's hilarious too you you can attest to this like you all you need to do is have a session to know that everything is supposed to be really funny and fun that's always I have I anytime I do any kind of session or any kind of remove the ego is one of the top reminders of it's like it is just supposed to be fun it is supposed to be all like funny and joyful because your inner being and source always has such a sense of humor. I started picking that up before I was always like, Abraham is so funny. And Joshua is so funny. They're always yeah. funny. There's like, there, I always catch, I even catch more now. I hear like Joshua kind of laugh about like, you <laughs> kind of like there'll be a laugh in there about an answer. And yeah. when I go under, I am usually laughing so hard. No, no, this is what people need to hear out here. Not it's not laughing or oh, she it sounds like she is but it's actually the inner being is laughing at the human so source yeah. is laughing hysterically 
and I will, I will be laughing, but it's actually my interview thinks it's so funny watching like Kate, like Kate explore, you know, Kate explore and thinks it's really yeah. fun and funny. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember what my inner being said about children. Do you remember that said that, that well, oh no, we channeled even what souls that wanted to come in. And they said they were laughing so hard because they didn't want to come in before I did the work, this work, the new approach. And they literally, I tell this story to people. They literally said, this was in one, one, of, one of our, our second or third session. I can't remember. And the children said, yeah, because now we'll be able to do whatever we want. And she won't yeah. tell us. So funny. And I knew under hypnosis in the session, I was like, that wasn't me. I was like, those, that was some other souls. That was not, it wasn't like Kate talking. And we got out of the session and I said, did souls just say they would like to come in through me so that they could misbehave? Like that is literally, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> They want freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we're just waiting for her to like get enough of this Joshua under her belt. So like we could just like come in and have like full freedom and like not have her tell us what to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. And you know, I think, you know, the multiple sessions, um, I've seen an impact with the clients, with you know, clients. And, you know, sometimes there's a year in between a session, a few months, a week, it like, I never know, but it's always divine timing. Like, it's okay. And we never really go back. We typically don't go back into any past lives. We just, we, you know, we ask the questions, we heal. Um, your inner being comes in, talks through you again. Yeah. And now, you know, oh. um, earlier Kate and oh. I, we were talking and I said, are you channeling? Like what's going on? And she's like, yes, she's channeling. It's really exciting. And I think, you know, we noticed we, we, well, you witnessed it and we experienced it when I was in, uh, under hypnosis and sessions. So that, and that, that gives you the confidence. So I think, um, for anyone out there, that's kind of really, that's really a first step because you will full, you will stay completely conscious, but you will completely remove that mind and that ego. It just goes completely quiet and your inner being will come through. It couldn't be more natural and you just know it. There's no denying it and it builds that confidence, but yeah, you're right. And, it, and the multiple sessions, they just build and you just go with the flow whenever, you know, when you're inspired, um, you know, we just, we, you, and we just kind of do it whenever either of us kind of feels like, oh, hey, that we should oh. do a set. No, and you just do it. And, but you build that confidence. And now um, that helps you I just identify that. Oh, that wasn't my voice. You know, that kind of, oh, that wasn't Yeah. Kate. yeah. That, no, that wasn't Kate. And it just, it, for me, if I do, I just know that difference. And we were talking about before we started recording. I mean, it's, it, it's unpredictable. It's unplanned. I can't call it. I, I don't, I'm not, I it just, I either kind of get in that mode and I feel it come through me. We we're saying even for me, it come, seems to, it, I can feel it if I'm, I do feel it if I'm talking and I'm channeling. Um, but it also comes a lot through writing and again, yeah. it's, it's just for me, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, I guess this is who I created. I have a overall, a very <laughs> excitable and excited, like personality, like a human. I'm easily like, <laughs> anyway, if you can't yeah. tell <laughs> I get like easily like get very easily excited. Um, yeah, I love your team. I love your non-physical team. So like Kate and I just had a session. It's just pretty fresh. It's like yeah. two days ago. Yeah. And um, 
I mean, it was just so cool. Cause like, so every time you do a session, you, you go under much quicker and, yeah. and easier. Right. Yeah. And her channeling, cause talking to her non-physical team, um, they have a uniqueness. They have, you know, like when I channel, I sound different from Joshua, but it over, it overlays, you know, like it's the same theory and the same kind of message, but it's being filtered through me. So Kate is channeling her team being filtered through her. And, you know, I just love them because they're like, they're so positive. They're like, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we talk about the Ascension. They're so excited. Uh, they comment on like how Kate is doing. She's really seeing things at neutrality. Um, talked about, I even took notes. I don't have my notes, um, but in your session, I actually took notes because they were talking about the light communities, the communities living together that humans really need to live together in these communities in order to feel the oneness. And it's really important for our conscious global shift. It came and up on just like how they said it. Yeah, it came up on Joshua Live today. There was something in there uh, from Joshua today to, to, to thread those two concepts together that uh, I, I obviously I always re listen to them, but today's Joshua Live, it, it was very much in there that you know, humanity is shifting to this, I want to say the way Joshua said, it's really that everyone will care about everyone else. I'm kind of putting these in my own words. So instead of, you know, everybody caring only about themselves or caring about just, you know, the one other or the two other or the three other people in your household, it truly will be one to one to one to one to one everybody caring about everybody else and I think this is exactly this vision that many people are getting to whatever degree really of way more togetherness connecting community um yes this like evolving to what we've had in many other lifetimes that like true like village community aspect but we are now you know, really creating it with many of those fundamentals in mind of support, love, et cetera, but we're creating something brand new. So we also can't, I always, you know, my teams, I was like, yeah. you can't, they even said this, didn't they, in the session, like, you, you guys can't even really, you can't even really imagine yet how awesome and yeah. cool that we're using our minds are like filtering it with like the concepts we have. So there are even other lifetimes. It's like, oh, like this village and this. And it's like our inner beings are going, you have no idea. <laughs> this is like yeah. looking like so massively awesome and cool. But yeah, the concept is that oneness and caring for one another. And um, that came through a lot in our session. It was really beautiful. But yeah, I do like, honestly, when I'm, channeling and get those messages it is all like love and positive love love, love. your team is love love, love. Honestly, very love based like um very like you know these relationships are heart centered they're love centered um but yeah i mean i think your team is very loving towards you there are some um you know I, I've done over a hundred sessions now and um, it kind of cracks me up how everyone's inner team, inner beings are really different and, uh, but similar at the same time. And I just, I just love your team. I just <laughs> love your team. So keep, keep channeling they and laugh a lot so I figure they're funny too so they're funny they think I'm funny they think yeah. play, seem to think playing the physical reality cave like through me through Kate as a vessel is like quite amusing and funny and I don't know I pick up that they think I'm a funny character that they created so yes. <laughs> it's amusing playing through the 
this Kate's lens, so to speak. Yeah. So I don't know, but yeah, to have, to have, to have fun and, and enjoy and love. And we're moving towards that one way, you know, we're moving towards that one way or the other for anyone who, I don't think it, I mean, silly, everyone in Joshua knows that, but you know, for the rest of, um, for anyone that we can spread that message to, um, that's really positive. And it could just be like the planting the seeds, uh, you know, for anyone who, to reassure them that, especially much of what has, you know, or has always, but is going on in, in the world. Like it is all just to shift us to more lab, every aspect. Like there's nothing that is, it's our creation to just shift us to more togetherness and more love. Even yeah. what Eve as the most like, Ooh, that's like not a good thing that's happening is still shifting us to more love, expanding us in love and shifting us to where we need to go. Totally. Totally. Well, thank you, Kate, for spending some time. Thank you, listeners, for listening to this. I hope you enjoyed thank our you. Uh, conversation. And until next time, bye, everyone. Bye. Love you all. <laughs>